All right, so let's put this other way of computing the cross product, let's put it to use and see how that goes. All right, so we want to calculate the cross product of u and v. So what we do is we, we put our i, j, k across the top. Now we put the entries of u, 1, 3, 6, and then we put the entries of v, minus 1, 2, 1. Okay. And then we expand. So for i, we cover up the entries under the i, and we do this 2 by 2 determinant here. 3 times 1 minus 6 times 2. Okay, and then we do minus j. We cover up the entries under the j. 1 times 1. Subtract 6 times minus 1. And then finally, for k, we cover up the numbers under the k. We do this 2 by 2 here. 1 times 2, subtract 3 times minus 1. Okay, and so we get, let's see, 3, 3 minus 12, so minus 9, minus 9i. Nine um, minus, minus 6 becomes plus 6, 6 plus 1, 7. Ah, but... Don't lose the minus sign out front as well. Becomes minus 7, minus 7j. Seven and then we have minus minus again, so 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 5k. You can leave it like that in terms of ijk. If you prefer the angle bracket notation, minus 9, minus 7, and 5. Cool. All right, now the question also asks us to do things the other way around. So let's go for it. V cross U. I, J, K, minus 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 6. Okay. So all we've really done here is, is swap the two rows. Um, now, if you've played with determinants before, you probably already know what's happening. But you can also realize that, well, um, what happens here when you swap the rows is, is you're really going to end up just swapping each of these pairs of products. Um, and so you might be able to already guess the outcome, but let's work through the details anyway just to see what happens. So for i, we have um, two times 6, right, cover those up, minus 1 times 3, okay, minus j, so for j we have minus 1, cover up the 2 and the 3, minus 1 times 6, subtract 1 times 1, plus k, and cover up the 1 and the 6, minus 1 times 3, subtract 2 times 1. So what do we get this time? Once we simplify, we get 9i. Um, so we're going to get minus 6, minus 1, minus 7, with an extra minus out front. Minus minus becomes plus 7. And then minus 5k, or um, 9, 7, negative 5. And of course, the punchline, if you didn't already see it coming, is that this is the negative of u cross v. Okay? So when you switch the order in a cross product, you get a minus sign. Um, that's something that, uh, that you want to be mindful of. Now, um, a lot of you know, physics and engineering students, when you learn about the cross product, um, you often end up in, you know, because you're learning about cross product often in contexts uh, where you're dealing with like angular motion, you're calculating torque and things like this. And, and you have to be concerned about these issues of right hand rule because um, you want to have sort of like a positively oriented coordinate system. And, and so then you have to kind of sometimes worry about, you know, should I be doing u cross v or v cross u because you're looking for that normal vector, but, you know, do you want the one that points up or the one that points down? Right, the order is going to reverse the direction of that cross product, and 
There are scenarios where that is relevant. For most of the stuff that we do in calculus, it's not as important, um, so we don't have to worry about it quite as much, but certainly in, in scenarios in like physics and engineering, you do have to pay attention to that sign, um, so it's something you want to be aware of.